there was a lot of comments about uh, this event potentially being uh, another January 6th moment. Why aren't you concerned about that? Well, I, I you know, I'm, not only am I not concerned about it, I think that that's true. It may be intentional, but it's a good thing because we're in a state where the judges, at least outside of this big cities that are blue cities, outside of Houston, Dallas, Austin, and, and San Antonio, you'll have honest judges and honest jurors, and you're not going to get the kind of shellacking that Ryan Zink got in D.C. for his January 6th non-offensive. If you can, they have the ability to, to gerrymander and pick the jurisdictions where the prosecutors corrupt, the judges are corrupt, and the juries are biased to persecute people that stand up for freedom. If you do it in the state of Texas, I think they'd find a different result. Now, we know your story. Um, what brings you here today? Well, you know, I believe that the nation stands on the brink of civil war right now. I think that the uh, Old North Bridge may now be uh, uh, Shelby Park in Eagle Pass, Texas. We've got the federal government standing up against the, the state of Texas in a battle over basically the nature of our republic the independence of the states, states' rights, those things guaranteed by the Ninth and Tenth Amendments of the Constitution, amongst other things. And it's, it's, it's a tipping point in our civilization. We're either going to fix this problem right now or we'll be a slave nation forever. There's a, there's a big... Um, what happened to you and your wife on your front step of your home? Should more can Americans be concerned about the Nazis and those coming in do the exact same thing? Well, you know, uh, when we addressed the Republican National Convention, I talked about affirmatively furthering fair housing with the government's plan, Joe Biden's plan, to invade the suburbs and eliminate single-family housing and uh, eliminate uh, uh, housing lot restrictions so they could do exactly that. They could infiltrate the suburbs with people that don't share our beliefs in our, in our freedom, don't share our beliefs in our civilization, in our heritage, in our constitution. I think that there is going to be some, I believe, and let me back up and say, I believe that Antifa and BLM could be turned on and off like a light switch by the powers that be. And I think they're going to be turned back on this summer to, to foment the crisis, which they can then blame on Trump and the MAGA Republicans and right-wing extremism. But I, I think that there is a concern about that. They uh, make a big point in saying that we're going to bring this to you in the suburbs, and I think they mean it. And I think that the forces of evil that run this country want that to happen. They found, you know, if you listen to Tucker Carlson or Alex Jones or Vitek, they all say the same thing. And that is that they don't believe that the battle for the presidency is going to be between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, that neither one of those people will survive for election day. I'm a little concerned about that, but I know that if it looks like Donald Trump's actually going to win and be president again, the left, the swamp, the, uh, the powers of evil will pull out every possible stop to make that not happen. And I think that the civil unrest is going to be a big part of that. Of course, the old cliche, out of chaos comes tyranny, and what they want is tyranny, and they will use chaos to create it. What's the best way, uh, this last question, what's the best way, uh, in your opinion, for Americans to be a part of fighting back? They, they seem like, um, feel powerless, and our, the, the, the elected officials that were supposed to fight for us have re refused to do so. I think, I think the answer is, you know, I ask every audience, including this audience here today, how many of us believe that there's a political solution to this problem, and nobody ever raises their hand. And the reason is that the powers that be select the range of candidates you're allowed to vote for. So no matter who wins the election, their guy gets the place. And that's the problem. What you really have to do, and I don't know how to do this, you have to eliminate the uh, the influence of the small uh, special interest groups, meaning the billionaire class, the people that actually run the world, the people that pull the strings of the billionaire class, and, and separate that from the electoral process. The problem right now is that it all comes down to money. That you can run the best campaign you can, you can campaign your rear end off, you can engage in as much retail politics as you want to, but the person that has the appropriate political consulting firm, which then generates the tens of millions of dollars necessary, or a billion dollars if you're running for president, that's who's going to win the election almost without a doubt. Rare exceptions occur like, like Donald Trump in 2016, but they're working like hell to make sure that mistake doesn't happen again. But it all comes down to money and power. And you have to, but the only thing we can do is what I said to this group here today, is what I say every time. The only thing that's going to save this country is widespread, mass, peaceful, civil disobedience. They can't put us all in jail. They can't kill us all. You know, Stalin killed millions of his citizens. Mao killed millions of his citizens. It'll eventually get to that point in this country unless the people stand up right now and just refuse to cooperate. The next time they roll out, when, when Pedro Gabiezos rolls out the next uh, pandemic, uh, 
virus X and tells us how we have to be locked down, just say no and hell no, and we're not going to take it.